Ozzy, am I right? Were you tapping your toes? Always. I don't know what you don't know, Mike. I'm an internet DJ. I actually have 15,800 listeners, so I love your intro. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I wanted to start this week. I'm going to get to something else in a minute about the Toronto numbers and the falling market. But uh, you know what's interesting? Uh, a lot of people are operating under the misconception that, let's say you, you, know, well, you write an offer and you remove subjects, um, that you can back away from it somehow. And maybe I thought you could re uh, reiterate a little bit there. Like you'd yeah, lose that's... your down payment. Sorry, Ozzy. You'd lose your down payment, but you wouldn't lose anything else. Yeah, and that's sort of in a rising market. That's probably what's going to happen. If I'm an owner and I know my prices have gone up and I can find another buyer, then I take your deposit. But you got to remember, when you sign an offer, remove the subject, you have a binding contract, and the owner can take your deposit, plus he can sue you for what it's called specific performance, like hold you to the contract. So, you know, again, what's my liability there? What's my potential exposure? Well, the owner says, uh, in one particular case this week, a uh, uh, buyer had uh, con uh, signed an offer for 1260000 last March. He was going to close September 1. He's removed subjects. He had a 60000 down payment. But then he walked. He didn't pay. Uh, and the owner tried to sell the property but couldn't for whatever reason. Uh, he sold it for 900000 And then he sued the buyer for the $360,000 difference. And guess what? A judge rewarded him that 360000 at six times the deposit, plus another $10,000 in costs. Well, in other words, it's, it's a big lesson there. You're not, you're, you're, I mean, all I wanted to bring people's attention, obviously, if you get into a legal dispute, you discuss it with a lawyer, but you are potentially exposed if you, even if, you, you know, if you've made a written contract, you've been the down payment, et cetera, you still, if you walk away, your exposure is much greater than just your down payment, at least according to the case this week. Hey, Ozzy, I want to just talk quickly about Toronto, though. I mean, Vancouver initiated the foreign buyer's tax. That was on the heels of an escalation in the property purchase tax the previous February. Then we get the, the uh, you know, the new mortgage rule changes. And still, the Vancouver market didn't have anywhere near the reaction to what's happened in Toronto with the changes they instituted about three months ago. Yeah, and I guess, you know, when you, when you sort of shake your head a little, because normally when sales fall like they did in Vancouver, Usually listings rise and then prices follow thereafter. But in Vancouver, the average owner said, no, I'm not worried. I'm going to be okay. And he did not rush out to put his uh, home on the market. Now, we're still down some 12% in sales in Vancouver on single-family homes and uh, also in the Fraser Valley. But in Toronto, the in single-family home market crashed by 49%. You know, like half of the deals didn't wow. happen. In addition to that, in July... The actual average listing still for sale, the active listing component, a 65% increase. So, And that clearly has an effect on prices as well. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, that listing thing is the thing you really watch. And I think that's one of the reasons, at least in my opinion, that you haven't seen a big price dip uh, in Vancouver at all. You haven't seen one, actually. I mean, you've got a much smaller, smaller rate of increase. But again, there's no listings. But remember you telling us that when they first brought these rules in, you said, hey, I think this is going to be more important because their listings go have gone up with this. So what's happened to prices? Well, certainly, first of all, of course, Ontario brought in a slew of different uh, rules aimed at investors, and so the buyer is sitting down. But if you look at the average price in July, was 746000 That's down from some 793000 just in June at the 6% decline. And over April, it's down 19%, because in April it was 921000 So clearly, on the single-family home sector, there's been a huge increase. And so when you look at the year-over-year -year numbers, they're somewhat misleading. They're still a little bit higher in all areas. But just look at this year. After this kind of a bad, bad news, things have really happened in Toronto. And that's going to accelerate because when people see that and they see those numbers come out, they feel the urge of listing their property and get maybe get out at the same time. You know, I look at those numbers, though, and the first thing, and I know it's a bigger subject we have time here today, but I do look at it and saying, okay, so who benefited? Toronto wanted to slow down their market. Presto, as you say, 49% drop in single-family homes. Yeah, the prices are down, certainly from the April peak, but I'm still not sure anybody's really benefited from this. I mean, it's such a small group that you said, well, they benefit if they just went in and bought this, this month. You know, they're better than they were in April. I get that, but I don't see overall how that's uh, being totally helpful. I just think it's the wrong remedies in most cases. Yeah, and the losses are substantial. Never yeah. mind the real estate commission, lawyers' fees, and a thousand of 
new furniture that could be bought, all of those kind of things. Yeah, it has an impact economically. Let's talk hot property quickly. Yeah, we got a, an RV park, something different. It's 75 miles from Vancouver, but just outside Hope on 5.3 acres, 48 RV lots. They're, they're spacious. And the interesting thing here is you have an opportunity to sell each lot uh, to other owners. The price is a million seven fifty. And in Victoria, we have a house on 5.9 acres, also for that magic price of one million seven hundred fifty thousand. So a wartime bungalow or an RV park or a house on 5.9 acres in <laughs> in Victoria. There you go. For more on that, just go to juroc.com, juroc.com, and you look on the cr- uh, hot property button. It's always fun to have a look at what Ozzy's just uh, crossed his desk. He said, hey, maybe you want to have a look at this and do some due diligence. But uh, always interesting to do it at juroc.com. Ozzy, you go out and have a great weekend. I'm happy I, uh, you're not golfing and you're not boating this weekend. I don't even want to know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm crying because I'm not out golfing. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> we're, we're, we're laughing because we're not. Ozzy Jurek, <laughs> find him at jurek.com.